appreciate that. Yeah, Fred, you better clap. Amen. Boy, I'm watching you. <laughs> Adamandbeliever.com. Amen. I sent this message to Sister Evelyn the proof, and I told her, you know, I'm going to get in trouble again. It's kind of just the theme of this year. So, amen. Look at somebody and say, the color of Christianity. Now, I know somebody might get offended. Hopefully, you will so that you'll know that this is not a stop off for Hebrew Israelite doctrine. Amen. If you believe any of this in part or in whole, you are in the absolute positive wrong church. You're in the wrong church. And if you talking to folks in there about it, they're going to tell me and we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to walk up to you with this microphone and ask you some questions. Or if you, you may be a part of the Aryan nation. You may wear a sheet on certain nights. And you may be in here and we don't believe that either. Amen. We don't believe black supremacy. We don't believe white supremacy. We don't believe any human supremacy because there's only one supremacy. There's only one supreme being. And that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Only one. He's not a black man. He's not a white man. He's the son of man. <laughs> and he's in a dimension where he don't even have to have skin color because he don't have to have skin. Somebody told me that because I said in one message that it was... You know, God's image was translucent. Jesus' image was translucent. How do you know it's translucent? The Bible don't say it's translucent. Well, it's translucent as far as our eyesight is because we see skin, but we can't see into that dimension. There's no need for skin in that dimension. Amen. We need skin here to house our bodies, but we know skin decays. And if there's no death there, then there's no skin there. Amen. Amen. So I'm just letting you know, you might want to leave now. <laughs> because we're going to talk about this. This church is growing rapidly and we cutting it out and making room and all of that. So I want to make sure you know you in the right place. Amen. Amen. We don't believe in any, any supremacy, any, anything. We don't worship blackness and your melanin ain't popping in here. Amen. Your melanin is not, look at somebody say, your melanin is not popping in here. I mean, we don't worship skin cells and skin pigmentation. That's foolish. Amen. How you living is the question. Is your lifestyle popping? So we don't do any of that. Look at somebody say the color of Christianity. All right. So the foundation of our belief is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Y'all believe that to be true? Yeah, that's what makes you a believer. You're not a believer because you believe the Old Testament law. That don't make you a believer. You believe that that law, the penalty of that law, was paid by Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. That's what makes you a believer. Look at somebody and say, that's what I believe. Now, whoever didn't say that, do it again. And tell me who didn't say it. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, that's what I believe. believe. <laughs> Y'all know I'm just looking for a fight. I'm, I'm so happy. I mean, I'm looking for a member of the thunder or something in here. But the foundation of our belief is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Don't come to church if you don't believe that. 
go fishing. Amen. Go play Uno. Go do something else. Don't come here if you don't believe the foundation of what we believe. That is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh, I didn't read the scripture. John says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. Who said that? Jesus. Jesus. And the life, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, what? Yet shall he live. Yet shall he live. It, isn't that plain and simple? It's going to be a plain and simple. It don't, you know, I, it just bewilders me sometimes why these you know, theologians and guys that know Greek, Hebrew, and all this have to have these long, intense debates with the black Hebrew Israelites. It is really not that deep. Amen. Amen. I don't have to debate my faith because my faith is what I believe. You can pull all the documentation that you want, but your documentation doesn't change what I believe. I believe Jesus was born. I believe Jesus lived. And I believe Jesus died in my place. Jesus gave his life for us to bring us back into good standing with God by paying the what? penalty of sin for us when you don't believe this who's paying for your sins are you going to go give them to a priest or are you going to try to do things to buy it Romans 6 and 23 for the wages payment y'all know what wages are how many of you got a job Amen. When it's time to get your wages, you know exactly what that word means, right? Your wages. That's your payment. Amen. Wages is money. We don't get paid in corn and rice and oxen. We get paid in money. So money is wages. Wages is payment. Amen. So Jesus gave his life's to bring us back into good standing with God by paying the penalty of our sin, which the wages of sin or payment for sin is death. The only way to pay death is dying, which makes it impossible for us to pay it and live. How you gonna pay death and live if you got to pay death. Pay with death. If you have to pay with death, you can't live. If the wages or the payment for your sin is you dying, then how do you do that and live? That means someone has to die for us so that they can pay it for us. But it can't just be anyone it has to be someone that is sinless. Because if he sinned, he'd have to die for his sin. And then he can't pay it. This is plain and simple. Look at the young folk. They understand it. You got this easy though. This is easy. He writing a rap right now. It's that easy. And it really is. You can't live and pay it. Someone has to live and pay it, which Jesus did, but that someone can't be guilty of it, or when he died, he'd only pay his. But because he didn't sin and had no sin, then he could die for the sins of others. I have preached already. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through who? Jesus Christ our Lord. So we can get life through him. Because not only did he die for sin. 
He rose again and yet lives. So now he can pay the penalty of our sin while we live on earth, but then we can live through him in eternity because he's alive. Because of his death, we can be totally forgiven and free from sin. All we have to do, look at somebody say, all you have to do is believe on him in word and deeds. Look at somebody, deeds? Oh, that's works. No, no. The Bible said faith without these deeds. So you believe on him, but your actions conform to what you believe. Nobody believes something without acting on it. When you believe Santa Claus was coming to town, you put raggedy cookies. You know, you only had them cookies that one side is vanilla and the other side is chocolate. Remember, mom, you know, your parents used to buy those you did two for a dollar. It's a hundred a minute. You put those out hoping Santa would be okay. If you grew up believing in Santa Claus. I grew up believing in Santa Claus. I didn't care what nobody said. I mean, one time we was riding in the car about four or five years old. We was riding with my cousins and it was almost midnight. They had babysitted us and it was almost midnight and they had us in the car crying. They're like, oh, I see him. I see Santa. He's already delivered. He's like, ah, get us home. Get us home. I don't know if Todd, you remember that. I, you remember that? I was traumatized. Oh, you gonna miss him this year? Ah, no! Why you do kids like that? Oh, crazy cousins. You know, relatives can be crazy. Had us crying, Jay. We was crying. I see him. I see Rudolph. I see the sleigh. <laughs> we was crying. I know I was crying. Man, I want some toys. I need G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip where you push his back and he do this. These young folk don't know nothing about that. Oh, y'all to y'all toys got AI. Y'all to y'all toys tell you when you gonna die. We don't have we didn't have them kind of toys. Our toys was dumb. You hit a butt, you hit the back. That's all he could do. And he gonna only do it for a few weeks. For that hand break off. Remember that hand was attached to a rubber band. And it just, that hand break off. <laughs> Kevin be looking like I had that toy. I, just, I know exactly what you're talking about. Y'all got them smart toys. Toys hooked up to your phone. Telling it to come here. Come here, toy. Hey, man. All our toys was assembly required. Remember that? And if they took batteries... Whatever the function was with the batteries, you just live without that. You learn to play other ways with it. All the battery functions, we know that's only Christmas Day. Christmas Day, they give you that, that, that little silver battery with no name that came with it. Once that die, you know your parents ain't buying no battery. You know how much batteries are, boy? Daddy! And we didn't have remote controls, the TVs and stuff, but we could have took them out of that. We didn't have smoke detectors, we could have took them out of that. Just wasn't no batteries nowhere. Stores didn't even carry them. They knew you wasn't going to buy them. So whatever the function of the toy was, well, if it had batteries, it would make this sound. So you got to make that sound yourself. <laughs> You know, you ain't getting no batteries. <laughs> I don't think a Duracell or an Energizer was ever at our house. That's them expensive batteries. <laughs> okay, let me get back to this message. <laughs> Reliving my childhood. All we have to do is believe on him in words and deeds 
but now being made free from sin. And the Bible tells us that if you are repentant, do works meet of repentance. Those are deeds. Look at somebody say those are deeds. Yeah, your deeds change when your belief changes. Romans 6 and 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. Your fruit should be unto what? When you're made free from sin and you become a servant of God, your fruit should be unto holiness. That means you're not like you used to be. Yeah. Now you attempt to live a holy life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Your music changes. Your movie changes. Your friends change. Amen. Those you date, it changes in the courtships. Amen. And equally yoked courtships. Those are deeds. I know I'm preaching. And the end everlasting life. Oh, Lord. Just the opposites of the spectrum. Racial prejudice is a construct devised by the devil to cause division in order to class us and make us rank others. Some of y'all hate white people and don't know why. You were told to. You were told that it was the white man that kept your daddy from buying them toys on Christmas. <laughs> we celebrating Kwanzaa. Because only have to get one gift every seven weeks. I don't even know what the rule is with that crazy Kwanzaa. Y'all know Kwanzaa is a made up, just foolishness. Dude that made it up was in prison when he made it up. Foolishness. He made it up so black people can have a day because he was mad at white people. And now they have Kwanzaa. You named your daughter Kwanzaa and didn't look it up. Amen. You don't know why you prejudice. Because you free. Amen. You're not oppressed. You don't go to work and say, Massa, what do I do next? You go to the bank and cash your check just like everybody else. Amen. You don't have chains on your ankles. Amen. So you're, you're free. So why are you mad at white people? What did they do to you? Well, my ancestors. How far back are you going? Because if you keep going back, you'll find out everybody was black. If you keep going back. If you keep going back, you find out the first enslavements was blacks enslaving blacks. Dark skin, excuse me. How the dark skinned people, the chosen ones, when everybody was dark skinned. So the dark ones are the chosen, but the dark, dark that enslaved them just depends on the darkness. I mean, you walking up with a lever, you know that, what's some things when you're getting paint? in your house and it go from light to dark swatches you got swatches oh no you're not a chosen one you you're not the right that's not the right shade of negro right. foolishness racial prejudice is a construct meaning it was constructed for this purpose to turn us against one another amen when they do autopsies and go inside of bodies they can't say this is Negro kidney. <laughs> this is a Caucasian spleen. Oh, this is African intestine. Whole lot of goat in it. 
Everything in it is just spicy. <laughs> it's ridiculous. This is a Hispanic lung. When you squeeze it, it, it says Spanish words. <laughs> I'm trying not to be. I, I was right there. I, okay, I'll stop. I'll stop, Clemente. Y'all all right? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, that ain't, when you cut us open, there's no difference. We are biologically the same. Amen. So how can our outward shade and pigmentation dictate what's inside? I remember when y'all was growing up, there was that one white kid in the hood. Remember him? <laughs> this is before Eminem. This dude grew up in the hood. They had to tell him of his privileges. Because he, he lost them all <laughs> in the hood. He didn't know. Uh, he thought he was like everybody else. He started using the N-word. Remember him? He started using the N-word just whenever. And y'all just, everybody cool. He listened to the music, started rocking his hat to the side. And he just blended. And was just as white. But it didn't matter because he grew up and he was culturized by, it's culturized the word, he was cultured by his surroundings. John 70, 24 tells us, judge not according to the appearance. Now, what's appearance? Is that the color of skin? That's the way you appear. The Bible says don't do that. Look at somebody say, the Bible says don't do that. Don't judge according to the way a person looks. But judge what? Righteous judgment. That's plain and simple. When racism comes into play, then everything comes into question. We then believe that some are what? Superior. And that God favors us, marks us, and identifies us by our skin color. The Ku Klux Klan that's why they were created because they believed that they were superior to black people. The black Hebrew Israelites were created because they feel they're superior to white people. Not just superior, but white people are cursed. And the Klan believe black people are cursed. When the Bible says, judge not according to what? Appearance. But when racism comes into play, everything comes into question. We then believe that some are superior and that God favors us, marks us, and identifies us. They say, somebody told me that some white people believe that Cain, the mark that God put on Cain, was blackness. Cain was already dark. He was in full Africa. Then they say, Ham, when he looked upon his father's nakedness, he turned black. <laughs> because of what he saw. They taught that on seminary level. Seminaries taught that. That the curse of Canaan was blackness. When you look at pictures online, you type in a Bible word and you want to find a Bible character, they're all white. Absolutely. Then when you get to the black one, there's some voodoo attached to it. That's, that's not Joseph. Yeah, it's just people trying to claim and make it theirs and this is mine and I want to whitewash the Bible, I want to blackwash it, all of that. And God is, man, please, God is not even looking at things that way. And we shouldn't either. Yeah, I make jokes. You know, I like to keep y'all on your toes. But 
But y'all know I'm not racist. I love everybody. I see everyone the same. Amen. Everyone the same. If you're a believer, we're the same. We then believe that some are superior and God favors Marxists and all of that. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, when he was trying to choose the king, he walked in and found all the good looking guys because that's the way they chose the first king. God said, anoint Saul. And Saul was, the Bible said, he was head and shoulders above everybody. Bible said from the shoulders up, no one was taller than him. His Everyone else came to his shoulders. So Saul walked around just looking down on everybody. Yeah, and so, but then he messed up. And so when God went looking for another king, he told him this time, don't look for that. Don't look for the good, tall, good looking dude. He said, go just get the one I picked. I'm picking him. I'm going by the heart this time. I need somebody whose heart will be after mine. And so Samuel went into Jesse's house looking and the Lord said unto him, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I've refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. The Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man does what? But the Lord does what? On the day of Pentecost, 120 converts of Jesus were gathered in the upper room. Y'all enjoying this message? Amen. Good old race message. We need it. The Jews were from, these Jews were from all regions, skin complexions and creeds. God called them all together because a spiritual blood transfusion was about to occur. The Bible tells us that the room shook. A Russian mighty wind came through. Fire appeared and the language creed barrier was completely shattered. So they were from all different places, but God shattered their language creed barrier. This was the power of God showing that his spirit had arrived to change us all into a new breed of human. Acts 2 and 8 says, And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? So once all of this happened, the power of God came, rushing mighty wind, everything, they start speaking in the language of each other. The Parthians, the Medes, the Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Serene and strangers of Rome. Now this is the one. Jews and proselytes. Who are the proselytes? These are the people that weren't Jewish but were converted to Jewry. They were in there too. <laughs> Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful work of God. Told y'all that in part 14 of the Truth Behind Hip Hop, God undid Babel. The very thing he did at Babel by giving them all Languages that they couldn't understand to hinder their progress. Now God gave them languages that they all could understand to forward his progress. We are filled with the Holy Ghost to make us a part of God's chosen people. Our blood is changed and regenerated so that we are kin to him and carry his power within us. So it's not just us saying Jesus lives inside of me. No, he really lives in you. 
His blood makes you a part of him. Amen. This is Christ living inside of us. It's not just the saying, but it's actual and factual. He has yoked himself within us with his shed blood, and we carry his blood in our earthen vessels. That's what all this commotion was about. It wasn't just so you could speak in tongues and so you could feel fire. That fire is a transfusion. Something is happening to your genetics. Something is happening to your DNA. You are being transfused by a power that overrides your sinful blood state. So when we accept Christ, it's not just on a whim. Oh yeah, I believe. No, no. When you really accept him, he comes and lives and he changes your being so that he can occupy in there. He has to change you to live inside of you. Can I keep preaching? Titus 3 and 5 says, it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he did what? He saved us. How did he save us? By the what? <laughs> you ever found like an old shirt? And that was your favorite shirt. It ended up behind the dryer or something. Remember? And it's all stained up and all that. But man, you see that shirt? Oh no, I'm rocking this again. This will live again. You get that shirt and get the tie pin and draw on it. Then you get some bleach and some, you wash it up, clean it, get it. It's clean, it's new. Now you can wear it. You washed it. You cleaned it. And you made it whole again. Amen? But it took work. It took chemicals. Yeah, to change it back well that's what the blood of Jesus is it's chemicals it's genes it's genetics that's what the word regeneration means washing of regeneration if you look in the word regeneration you'll see the word gene genes are changing your genetics are changing you've been washed and regenerated that's why you can't do some of the stuff you used to do that's why you can't go to some of the places you used to go. That's why you can't sing some of them songs you used to sing. I can't do that anymore because I've been regenerated. I've been made new, made whole. I've been changed. And the renewing made new again by the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen? Amen? It's a good message. Yes, it is. This makes us children spiritually and naturally. Spiritually and naturally. That's why you can't look the way you used to look. Uh, you can't? I can't wear that no more because I'm not the same. Amen. Amen. God sent himself in the form of his son to take human blood and regene it so that we can be one with him. Our once sin sick blood is restored back to its previous state of purity before the fall and we are blood bought family members with God. Amen. Titus 3 tells us that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to what? The hope of eternal life. God took the power that was given to the various Jewish cultures and creeds at Pentecost 
and then gave it to the rest of the world. So first it came to the Jews, all the different Jews from all the different places. Within the Jewish community, the creed barrier was already broken in the upper room at Pentecost. So it was time for God to break down the Jew-Gentile barrier as well. He gave it first to the Jews because he was a Jew. And he was with the Jews. And they were gathered together with him. Bible said Jesus came and appeared after he was crucified and risen and hung around for 40 days. 40 days. Who going to tell him it's time to go? Jesus could hang around as long as he's like, man, I am the resurrection and the life. I'll be around as long as I want to and I'll wake some old folks up if I want to. He had already done that when they tried to put him in the tomb. After he was crucified, the Bible said when he died, folk just got up. Start walking around in town. Could you imagine that? Roger! What? I'm back. I'm back. Jesus' blood just hit the ground and folks just start waking up because it was the blood of life. My, that man, my goodness. Acts 10 tells us, Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of person. Now, Peter was a borderline racist. Borderline. Because Jesus, right before this, God gave him a vision of this sheet. Sheet came down. Pork was on it. Ham and bacon. It was still in the form of animals. The Bible said even creeping things, bugs, lizards, all kind of stuff was on it. And the Lord said, eat, Peter. And now Peter, it's so crazy. Peter talking to the Lord. Now, Lord, you know. I can't eat this. <laughs> you talking to the Lord? The Lord said eat it. Now, Lord, you know. This is unclean. I can't eat unclean food. And the Lord said, if I said eat it, then it's not unclean. Amen. Yes, Amen. Let me go over here and preach this. <laughs> <laughs> she won't even look at me. She's like, she got that Peter, boy. We're going to have to deal with it. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but he said, hey, it's clean. All of it's clean. And it wasn't even about the food. He was preparing him for an unclean dude. Because a dude had a vision. Cornelius had a vision. Cornelius is a Gentile. He had a vision to go talk to Peter. Now, if the, Peter hadn't had this vision, Peter wouldn't have talked to Cornelius because Cornelius eat that unclean stuff. So God is preparing Peter because, man, this is about to leave the Jewish community and not be exclusive to that community. It's about to go everywhere, so I need to prepare you because a Gentile man is going to come. And the Bible said he was a good man. Pray and believed. He just needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost power. Peter had the power, but Peter had to be prepped because Peter was used to judging by appearance. Things are changing now. So Peter says, of a truth, God is no respecter of person. Now, this is the new reform, Peter. He says, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is what? Accepted with him. After the death of Stephen, the persecution of believers drove them to the uttermost parts of the world. So persecution does that. 
you know, they were all together in that one place. Then Stephen gets killed. Everybody's like running for their life. God wanted them to. He wanted to use Stephen's death. Stephen was a martyr. Stephen already saw where he was going. God's like, I'm calling Stephen home, but y'all need to witness this so y'all can get out of here and go spread this gospel. So they began to take it to the uttermost parts of the world as he prophesied back with his disciples. Yeah. And so after that, Stephen, they got persecuted. It drove them all to the uttermost parts of the world. The gospel began to spread to Jewish and Gentile cultures and many were saved. Various Gentiles gathered together to form the church at Antioch. This is significant because this is where the name Christian was derived. I thought it was the white man's religion. Christianity, that's the white man's religion and Christianity. I've even heard Christian pastors. I'm going to stop saying Christian because the name is this and that. You don't have the right to stop saying what the Bible called them. You can't override the Bible because you tired of hearing it. Maybe you're not a good one. It was the fellowship of Jews and Gentiles together to form the church that God had always planned for. Interestingly enough, the church with mixed creeds, cultures, and skin tones were the first ones called what? That's why they don't like the word Christian. That's why the Hebrews don't like it because it's all inclusive. Acts 11 and 26. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. Talking about Barnabas. Barnabas was the pastor of Antioch Church. Antioch Fellowship. Church of the living God pillar and ground of the truth I don't know what the <laughs> yeah and but the church grew so big he had to go get Paul to help him and a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples that they made there in Antioch were called what Christians is that in the Bible y'all know how many inboxes and Texts I get, I mean, uh, messages I get weekly. Why y'all call yourselves Christians? It's not in the Bible. People believe anything they see on a TikTok video. Why you call yourself Christian? You know Christian ain't even in the Bible. Acts 11 and 26. The disciples that were made in this church, made up of all kinds of people, were called Christians. The religion of Christianity was birthed when all men worshiped together, regardless of their creed or language. The Holy Ghost was giving people the tongues of one another to make this possible. So God was like, I'm not going to even let language stop you. I give you each other's languages so y'all can come together and fellowship all creeds and get this gospel spread. Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore and teach how many nations? All Jewish nations? All Gentile nations. All nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Summary! Once we accept the fact that God never judges us by skin color, but by the heart, then we can understand the perfect plan of God to bring us all together as Christians. You won't hate Christianity when you understand that racism was given to you to divide you. It wasn't given by God. The Bible states on numerous occasions, God is not a respecter of persons. 
calling Christianity the white man's religion or saying that black slaves are the chosen people is ridiculous when you grow and mature. See, that's the part. You got to grow and mature in the faith to understand the power of the Holy Ghost. So people that believe that Christianity is the white man's religion or black slaves are the chosen people, they haven't grown and matured in the faith. They're still in the Old Testament. I know you haven't grown and matured because you ain't got to the New Testament yet. Amen. The New Testament is the completion of the Old Testament. They go together. The Old Testament prophesied of the New and the New fulfilled those prophecies. So you can't just use the Old Testament or just the New Testament, but you have to put them both together because one is the completion of the other. The Jews carried the bloodline to bring forth the Savior. And once he came, his blood was spilled so that all could accept it as our blood. He couldn't choose multiple bloodlines to birth the Savior. There had to be a family that he derives from. That's like you having multiple fathers. You can only have one. Can you have multiple mothers biologically? He can only have one. So he chose the Jews to do it. That don't mean they're better than anybody. That just means he chose them to do it. Because only one could do it. Only one woman could birth Christ. I know I'm preaching. So the Jews carried the bloodline to bring forth the Savior. And once he came, his blood was spilled so that we could all accept it as our blood. Now, Jew and Gentile, male and female, free and bond, can choose his bloodline and be grafted into the plan of God to redeem mankind from sin and death. That's everyone now. This has absolutely nothing to do with skin complexions. But it is strictly a blood thing. Look at somebody say it's a blood thing. All y'all's blood. If you white, Hispanic, black, Native American, whatever you are, if I cut you, all of our blood is the same. Our sinful blood has to be transformed. Jesus provided a way for us to be what? Cleansed. But when we focus on the outward appearance instead of the blood, we miss the whole point. Christianity is the religion of all men coming together to worship Christ as the son of God and redeemer of mankind. It's not the white man's, black man. It don't belong to a man. It belongs to Christ. His name is in it. Amen. There's nothing wrong with religion. The Bible even tells you how to have good religion. Amen. Take care of the widows and the fatherless and be unspotted by the world. The Bible said that's good religion. If something was wrong with religion, he wouldn't have said that. Amen. So there's nothing wrong with religion. Now a person can be religious and think they're better than someone else, but that has nothing to do with the religion of Christianity. We are called Christians because of the varying colors and skin tones coming together to esteem one another higher than ourselves. So not only do we come together and believe we're all equal, but we look at others, all other races, whoever you are, we esteem you higher than ourselves. What does that mean? That's what Jesus did. He died because he esteemed us more important than his own life. Because we are all different outwardly, but the same inwardly confirms the work of Christ and the infallibility of his word. He did this and we receive it and we will trivialize his crucifixion by bickering over outward appearances trivialize his crucifixion 
by bickering over outward appearances. We are all one in Christ and Christians because of his blood. Amen? Look at somebody and say, the color of Christianity is red. <laughs> That's it. If you have his blood, Oh, oh, this passage. They, people have so many problems with this passage. To even set up a display with the handwritten marks a lot posters because of a genealogy where we come from, who we really are. That's a genealogy. Genealogy is who we really are, the descendants of. That's a genealogy. Look at somebody and say, that's a genealogy. Yeah, yeah, where we came from. They picked us up and brought us here, and then they took us there, and, and we are the originals. That's a genealogy. And you got to worship on the Sabbath, and you got to do this and that. Those are wranglings about the law. And the Bible says, Jeff, in Titus 3 and 9. But what? Avoid. Let's stay on the avoid. 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 Now, if I've come to you about this and you didn't hear me, the Bible tells me to avoid you. Tells me I can't wish you Godspeed. Say, don't even bid them Godspeed. Get away from them. Because now their own words have to punish them. Their own belief has to punish them. Because if you're trying to live by works, you won't make it in. Because your works aren't good enough. But avoid stupid and foolish controversies. Terrence Howard controversies. You watch that. If you watch him for about 15 minutes, your brain will be scrambled. Because he has just enough truth mixed with new age philosophy to make you question everything. When you, you know what's in everything? Christianity and the Bible. That's what the devil did in the garden. He made Eve question what she wants was solid on. Quit watching these. That's the only reason he's on there. He's not a prophet. He's mad because of Iron Man 2. He went and he didn't know none of this before Iron Man 2. He trying to act like I always knew this and this is why I didn't get that movie. No, you bid too high. They said, we're not paying that. That's too much money. So we'll go get Don Cheetos and he'll be Iron Man. And, and then after he saw Infinity Wars and all of that, that this went on for 10, 15 years, 20 years of movies, he missed out on, he went and started studying. <laughs> Got some books. And went mad. He's mad. Look at somebody. But he was making some sense. Keep watching. Kanye was making some sense too, wasn't he? Keep watching. Cat Williams was making some sense. Keep watching. They want you to keep watching. Because they don't want you to hear it from the preacher. 
the man that's ordained by God to teach you. See, when I teach you, I feed you. And it feeds your spirit, man, to make you stronger, not confused. The only way you confuse is what's getting preached in here is if you've been watching that other stuff. Because what I preach is going to agree with what the Bible says. The devil's trying to just stamp the preacher out, man. Let me get to this. Avoid stupid and foolish controversies and genealogies and dissensions. That's disagreements with what you know to be true. You know it to be true, at least you did, before you start arguing about it. Now you question it. Dissensions and wrangling about the law. For they are what? And what? Futile. As for a man, whoever you are, even if you in here, a heretical, sectarian, and cause of divisions, after admonishing him a first and second time, what are you supposed to do? Reject him from your fellowship and have nothing more to do with him. This is the Amplified. Well aware, be well aware when you do this, that such a person has utterly changed. He is perverted and corrupted. He goes on sinning, believing what he believes, though he is convicted of guilt and self-condemned. Nobody argues all the time unless they're self-condemned. When a person keeps arguing with you, they doubt themselves. The person that is sure of what they know doesn't have to debate it. They don't have to argue. I don't go online looking for threads to jump in, comments to jump in, pages to get on, talking to this. I don't have to do that. Because I know what the word says and I know what I believe. But that person that's argumentative, that causes divisions, that has to keep on defending their stance, they doubt it. And because they doubt it, they won't company. Amen? So we know what we believe. Look at somebody and say, I know what I believe. Everyone stand to your feet. I get invited constantly. Ooh, man. Can you jump on my podcast? Can you jump on my program? Can you jump on my TV show? Can you come on my this and that? And come on and talk and I need you, man. You, you, you need to talk and this and that. No. Has anybody pulled up a video evidence of me debating anybody ever? I don't debate. Why would I? I've given you information. And I know it's from God. So what do I have to debate it for? It's not my job to convince you. It's my job to preach to God's people. Amen. That's what this message is for. But I know in your family, especially if you're black, there's some Hebrews somewhere. You know, Hebrew Israelite, that's the religion of no accountability. So when you want to get in something that's not governed by anybody because you're mad at governing authorities and you're angry with authority and angry with leadership and angry with people and don't want anybody to tell you what to do because of what the white man did 400 years ago, you get in that. Nobody can tell you what to do. I don't even know which Hebrew Israelites there were in front of the stadium. There's like 8,000 different ones. That's because they don't have a leadership. They don't have any leadership. And they just keep changing it up. 
The Bible is our governing authority. And as long as we believe the Bible, the Bible will set order. As long as the Bible set order, if we conform to the order of the word, we'll be righteous. That's righteousness, right alignment, rightly aligned with what the Bible says. So if you may have them in your family, you may have been tempted by whatever the case. If you want prayer to be stronger and standing for what you believe, just come on up. Christianity. I'm a Christian man. You may have celebrities in your family. Terrence Howard might be in your family. Whatever it is. <laughs> but you want strength in this area. It may not even be about Hebrews. Like you just want strength to be able to stand for what you believe. I believe it was laid out plain in this message. And we need a message like this. So we can stand for what we believe. And this is not me convincing you of anything. You're already at the church. It's not me changing your mind about anything. You already made that choice. You're a believer. So know what you believe and stand for what you believe. Hallelujah. Anyone else? I want to get mixed up in it and man man it's getting tougher it's getting tougher because man social media is coming for the church every video they making fun of the church joking about it and making sport of it and joking you know I don't like joking about God and Jesus and that ain't funny don't send me that I don't want to see nobody making, just making sport, making light of the cross and who Jesus is. And man, some of this stuff we got to keep reverencing. We don't want to bring everything to our level. Got to reverence who God is. Amen? Everyone just bow your heads and thank you all for coming. Father God, we thank you for this message, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you for your plan to redeem us. Your plan to bring us all together. And God, your plan, your perfect plan never involved skin color. It never involved racism. It never involved prejudice. Your plan brings us together. No matter what creed we are, no matter where we came from, no matter how we were raised, no matter what language we speak, no matter what we look like, your plan came to bring us all together under one blood so we would be family with you. You identify us by the regeneration of our blood. So, Father, we've come, these that have come, God, I pray right now that you will strengthen them in this area. When they have to stand up to relatives and whoever's in their family and others that don't believe, God, when they have to stand up, give them the power of the Holy Ghost. Father God, when your men that wrote the word, the New Testament, when they would stand before the council, when they would stand before non-believers when they would stand before believers you would be specific and say and Paul filled with the Holy Ghost Peter filled with the Holy Ghost they were empowered to make witnesses they were empowered to see others filled so I pray Father God that you would fill us all come on lift your hands to him with the power of the Holy Ghost not to show that we can speak in tongues not to show that we can lay hands on the sick not to show that we can tread on serpents not for show but as a witness in this hour empower us with your power God so that we will have the power to change the hearts thoughts and intents of others. Give us the power to 
preach, teach, and stand for your gospel in this last hour. We give you glory and honor believing that you're going to do it. Fill us, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let me tell you something. Before you go to your seats, those of you that came up here, I'll tell you something to pray for. Pray to fill it. And I mean, when it's time to have a conversation with somebody about this, when it's time to stand up for it, pray, say, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost and fill it. I mean, you feel it happening. You feel it. Like when I'm getting ready to say this, something comes, I can't even describe it, but there's something that gives you, the Bible calls it an unction, meaning that an authority just rises up in you. You don't have to have all the answers. But the answers will come in that moment. Jesus told him, don't take paper, don't take a script. Because in the self-same hour, I'll give you what to say. It can happen and it will happen. If you believe it. Come on, hug somebody and say, I believe it. I believe the gospel. Hallelujah. I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ.